So we all know that osteoarthritis is a progressive disease and the final answer to osteoarthritis is a total knee replacement surgery. But previously there was not a good understanding about the progress of osteoarthritis and why osteoarthritis, why and how the osteoarthritis progress in a particular knee. And previously we could not do anything which can product, uh, protect the knee from progression of arthritis. So uh, here in this today's talk we will be talking about okay, why does osteoarthritis occur and how does it progress. So we all know that about 90 to 95 percent of osteoarthritis is a varus osteoarthritis which occurs in medial compartment. So if you draw the diagram of the knee, so this is your knee joint. So you have a lateral meniscus here and you have a medial meniscus here. So more commonly the arthritis in 90 percent of cases is a medial joint arthritis. The arthritis occurs to art for arthritis to occur the medial meniscus should be non-functional till the medial meniscus is there and it is functional arthritis should not technically happen so osteoarthritis on the medial side that is also called as a varus osteoarthritis is usually caused by you initiated by a meniscal injury or some patient may have a varus deformity. Now, if there is a meniscus tear, this varus deformity may progress. So you can have a simple meniscus vertical tear or a horizontal tear, which can lead to dysfunctional meniscus, which is leading to osteoarthritis. Or sometimes you will have a root tear. So this, if this is the meniscus, so this is a semicircular meniscus. The root, that is the meniscus can tear from this portion and which may lead to the meniscus to shift on the medial side and this is called as meniscus extrusion. This phenomenon was not understood before. So now we know that meniscus tear either in form of a meniscus tear in the substance or meniscus tear from the root is a predisposing factor for development of osteoarthritis. So what happens? If there is a root injury, the meniscus extrudes on the medial side like here and once the meniscus is extruded out of the joint, then it becomes dysfunctional. So this causes increase in the varus deformity because meniscus is a soft tissue which is entrapped in between the joint and so if it is extruding out, the patient will develop a little bit of varus deformity without any bone loss. So a meniscus extrusion can cause a little bit of varus deformity without coldness. So this concept is very important. So this is one of the predisposing factor for osteoarthritis. And these patients you will see, if you see the MRI, you will see the hyperintensity in this region and the hyperintensity in this region on the tibia and on the femur. So these lesions were previously denominated as SONC lesions spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee. So later we now we know that SONK the song lesion of the knee is basically a root tear. Because of the root tear the meniscus extrudes out and there is direct loading of the medial compartment of the femur. So medial femoral condyle you may have increased hyperintensity on the MRI that is labeled as a song lesion that is spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee. Also occasionally you will have hyperintensity in this region. So now as this extrusion progress, there is a point loading of weight in this area. So occasionally you can develop micro fractures in this area and this area. And once the extrusion starts, there is a progression of weight transmission on the medial side. And that can lead to bony deformity as well. Okay. So now with the understanding of all these things, now prior to a total knee replacement, because as I told you total knee replacement is the final solution for all these things. And previously because this concept was not, not understood, the prior to that the treatment was a high tibial osteotomy. And high tibial osteotomy basically relies on the fact 
that because in any kind of a progressive virus deformity, the loading of the knee shift on the middle side, and if you do an osteotomy and shift the load bearing axis, this axis will shift onto the lateral side. So STO is based on this principle. So previously STO was used in pre-arthritis stage. Now, with the advent of arthroscopic measures and understanding of these biomechanics, uh, we know that there is a root tear. So, if we address the root tear, and the other thing that has a progression uh, happens is extrusion repair. So, now we also put anchors on the middle tibia and repair it here. So, we can do an extrusion repair with a root repair, and that can actually delay the progression of osteoarthritis. Okay, so extrusion repair along with root repair can lead to delay in the progression of osteoarthritis because that will cause the meniscus to be in its place rather than extruding out. So they, it may give some extra years to the limb. So this is one uh, thing that has come up. The other thing that I want to emphasize is the presence of ACL will also determine the pattern of wear and pattern of arthritis. If the ACL is normal, the ACL is normal, you will have anterior medial wear. If the ACL is torn, you will have posterior medial wear. That means that if the ACL is intact, the loading, if we talk about the meniscus and the knee, the loading will be in this area. And the extrusion will also help in this. So, with an intact ACL, a root tear and extrusion will lead to anterior medial arthritis of the knee, which starts. Whereas, if there is a laxity of the PCL, of the PCL is torn, the wear will be in the posterior horn of the middle meniscus and the posterior part of the tibia. So, this is the important concept. So, anterior middle wear is more commonly associated with intact ACL along with a meniscus pathology, which is a root tear and extrusion. So, if you have a root tear which is not addressed for some time, the first place you will start seeing wear is the anterior medial part of the tibia okay so this anterior middle bear if it is a solitary anterior middle bear which is accompanied by lesion on the tibia and on the femur okay so i am talking i am talking a progressive stage one by one so if there is a root tear you can address root tear root repair and you are done if the disease is progressed, you have a root tear with extrusion, you repair root, you repair the extrusion and you are done. STO will always be an option if you have a virus knee. But if you have a condition in which you have a root tear with an extrusion and with a lesion on the femur alone, then you can do root tear extrusion repair along with a condal procedure like a mosaic plastic. But if you have a bipolar lesion, so if you have a lesion on the femur, lesion on the tibia, root tear, meniscus extrusion, lesion on the tibia, lesion on the femur, and hyperintensity on the femur and tibia condyle, then you are almost going into the stage that you can consider a unicondylar knee. So that is called as a UKA. Because in this stage, if you have a bipolar lesion, on of the cartilage on the femur and tibia, anterior medial arthritis of the knee, then these conditions cannot be adequately addressed by an arthroscopic modality. And if this much is the lesion, then total knee replacement is an overdue because your lateral compartment will be normal and your patella will be normal. So at this point of uh, at this stage, you can consider doing a procedure what is called as a unicondylar knee replacement. This is also called as a microplasty procedure and there are two kinds of uh, unicondylar knee replacements which are described. One is a mobile bearing uh, and one is a fixed bearing. The mobile bearing is the Oxford group which is promoted by Zimmer Biomet 
and the fixed bearing are number of others like from striker and depth. If you have an ACL intact, you can do a mobile bearing. But if you have an ACL torn, you cannot do a mobile bearing. But the advantage of doing a mobile bearing knee is its survivorship is long and the rate of wear is very very low in a mobile bearing. In a fixed bearing uni, the wear rates and rate of loosening is high. So, the longevity of those processes of fixed bearing uni condylar knee is relatively less as compared to a mobile bearing uni condylar knee. So, by and large, as and all, if you talk about uni condylar processes, we usually recommend a mobile bearing processes with, but it should always be considered when your ACL is Intact. You cannot do a mobile bearing processes if the ACL is torn. Okay. Now, if we talk about this microplastic procedure or a mobile bearing procedure, many many uh, students uh, argue that uh, total ear replacement is a very uh, very uh, predictable surgery and with a very good long term result. So, why cannot we do a total ear replacement for these kind of conditions? So, there are some advantages in doing a microplasty or a mobile bearing uni compartmental knee arthroplasty as compared to a total knee arthroplasty. So, what are they? So, there are some surgical result oriented factor and some medical factors. So, let us talk about one by one the advantages of unicondylar knee over a total knee replacement in this kind of scenario which we have talked. Okay, so the longevity is almost the same. So if you talk about, if you are doing this particular indication, the longevity of unicondylar mobile bearing knee is almost similar to a total knee replacement. That is about 50 to 20 years good results in long term studies if you do it in a proper indication. Number one. Number two, you have an intact ACL and an intact PCL after this surgery. So, you have a better proprioception. So, if we talk about results, so like you say that if after a total knee replacement, the patient will be able to walk normally or walk, you do, patient will be able to do a brisk walk. After this microplasty surgery, the patient will be able to jog or light run. So, he will be able to do a more rigorous activity. He will be more active. He can do active cycling. He can do active jogging and light running also with a microplastic procedure as compared to a total replacement procedure. The surgical, uh, interventional surgical is less, the duration of hospital stay is less, you can uh, uh, have a faster or a quicker recovery, uh, hospitalization is less, back to activity you are faster. So these are other advantages. If you talk about medical part, so the chances of medical complications are less, okay. So sometimes if these indications are fulfilled, you can also do this surgery in elderly population, like 70 to 80 years of age, sometimes you have a high risk patient. So medical risks are less, medical risks like DVT, like uh, thrombosis, uh, like need of blood transfusion. So, all other medical comorbid risk, risk of cardiovascular events is less in uni as compared to total because the magnitude of the surgery is smaller. The chances of infection overall is half in a uni condylar replacement as compared to total replacement. So, we talk about 1% risk of infection in a total replacement and this is about 75%. So, the overall risk of infection is also so, if these indications are satisfied, then in a properly indicated patient, a unicondylar knee replacement or a microplasty will be a good option. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, why is it called a microplasty technique? So, microplasty is a basically an instrumentation technique and it is called because uh, this special instrumentation are developed which can do the surgery with minimal incision and minimal damage to the soft tissue. So that is called, that is why it is called as a microplasty. The microplasty is basically an instrumentation technique which was developed by uh, biomedical. 
So, so if a passenger has done uh, unicondylar knee replacement and subsequently he develops lateral compartment osteoarthritis also. So can this UKR be easily turned into... Yes, this is, it is the advantage of UKR over a STO because sometimes you have a patient in which you can do a U, UKR and STO both. With same indication you can do an STO also and you can do a UKR also. But revising a STO is much more difficult than revising a uni. So revision of uni is easy. You have to use the same incision, same cuts. You have to just remove the implants, make cuts and do the, do the TKR as it is. The anatomy of the knee is not changed as compared to a high tendon So conversion of uni to a total knee replacement is not as difficult a surgery as conversion of a HTO to a total knee replacement surgery. So what <coughs> My chance to uh, unicondylar will get infected. So, uh, in revision, we do the same you can or? Uh, so, this is a difficult question. If infection is always a trouble, so infection in any uh, any uh, orthopedic surgery will be an issue. So, that will be the treatment has to be individualized. Sometimes you need to do a debridement, removal of implant, and you do the uni uh, totally in the, uh, in the other setting. Sometimes you can do just depending on the culture reports, you need to uh, do wash and you can uh, do it. But uh, infection is a uh, infection becomes a case specific thing. So if there is an infection after a unicondylar knee replacement, you have to address it appropriately as per the condition. There is no uh, no written uh, written norms as to how an infection after a unicondylar knee should be treated. You have to individualize it. Individualize it and treat it according to the same patient.